Namaste, this is Chanel from Queen of Cups Healing. This reading features the angels and ancestors and the Believe in Your Own Magic oracles. The wisdom for the dark half of the year is actually illuminating. You have the power to heal yourself, you have the power to define yourself, and you absolutely have the power to save yourself. At this point, I invite you to pick the deck or crystal which resonates strongest for you. In the video description, you will find my link to your URL, connecting you to links for my tower reading and spiritual services, my Etsy store for healing crystals, and my social media. You will also find timestamps for your chosen reading, which you can use to navigate the video. Thank you for joining me. Please like and share. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications for future readings. As always, love all and harm none. This includes yourself. Namaste, Hematai crew. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, happy Maybon. Happy Autumn Equinox. Um, I did bring the skulls in today, not just for the witchy vibes, but also because skulls to me represent the balance between life and death. And we're bringing a little bit of darkness in to represent the dark half of the season. And this is just your reminder that darkness is not a negative thing. Um, and when I say darkness, I mean loss, uh, release, endings, letting go. Um, what else? Sadness, worry, frustration, anger. Um, there is a light and dark to everything in this world and it's, um, it, they should both receive equal reverence if they can't at, at receive equal celebration. Um, but they should at the very least receive equal reverence. So, like I said last week, this is for everyone. Even if you're not, don't have witchy vibes, um, this is for the autumn equinox. And we're celebrating Gaia, her rest, uh, her surrender, or her imminent surrender, the balance between light and dark, um, the harvest, much to be grateful for, um, the wisdom of the light half of the year, and um, the wisdom of the dark half of the year. Alright guys, so thank you so much for joining me. Let's get started. Uh, today I went a little bit different. I did all oracle decks. Um, <clears throat> all oracle decks. We're not using five decks here, but <laughs> I did um, both oracle decks because I just want the intuition to come a little bit stronger. Um, and for me, personally, this is a personal choice, I find that tarot is a little bit more um, specific when it comes to the meaning. So I did in the spirit of the dark half of the year and the wisdom and the insight and the intuition that it represents, I wanted to let um, intuition flow. Let's begin. Position number one is what is an approaching blessing to be thankful for from a hematite group? Um, rest, release renewal. Um, it's interesting that we pulled the autumn card um, and this is a symbol that soon, um, even though some of you will miss summer, I'm not a summer person myself, but even though, at least in our northern hemisphere, some of you might miss summer, um, the beauty of the colder months or the autumnal months, even if it doesn't get colder where you are, is more of an energy of rest. If this whole weather thing doesn't apply to you at all, I still feel like the hematite group will find more balance, find more peace, and find more rest. So that is a blessing in itself, because um, <laughs> I know a lot of us could use more rest. Uh, how to achieve greater balance? Trust in the unknown, okay? So the best way to achieve greater balance is to remove the burden or the responsibility of taking care of everything, of foreseeing the unforeseeable, of managing all outcomes, of taking ownership of other people's outcomes, which we tend to do as well. So where, how to achieve greater balance? Trust the process, trust the universe, and above all, trust yourself. What does that mean? What I'm saying is trust that things will unfold as intended. Trust the universe that it will bring you things that will benefit you even if you don't see it as a direct blessing. These are going to benefit you for the wisdom, for the healing, for the growth. And then ultimately trust yourself to be able to weather 
whatever storms, whatever weather um, comes your way to be able to girl say weather again <laughs> to be able to manage navigate and adapt to whatever circumstances are coming your way so trust the process what needs to be released um i feel like there is an issue here of um releasing this inability to trust yourself or this inability to stand on your own I do feel very much, this is an intuitive hit, it's not necessarily based on the cards I'm drawing. The hematite group is giving, 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 and worried about everybody else. You're worried about your, you know, your sisters, your brothers, your neighbors, your friends, your partner, your co-workers, and it's like, trust and stand on your own, even if it makes you a leader, because not everybody is meant to be a leader, not everybody wants to be a leader, but it's about... Um, releasing your need to blend in with the pack or tend to the needs of others or kind of pull back so that other people um, get the opportunity to shine. This is about you. So release any fears or reluctance you have to lead the charge or, or stand on your own. What is the greatest wisdom that you have learned this year? Trust in higher forces. So I feel like the greatest wisdom that you've learned this year is in the power of the divine, is in the power of the universe, and is in the wisdom and understanding that you have in your higher self, which is a beautiful thing. Amen to that. Yes. So we're going to summarize before we get to the, um, to the message that the dark season has to teach you. But first, um, an approaching blessing to be thankful for is a little bit more rest and balance. You're going to get an opportunity to chance to rest, renew, and balance. How to achieve greater balance is trusting the process, trusting yourself, trusting the universe. It'll all be okay. Um, what needs to be released is um, the pack a little bit. Does that sound crazy? <laughs> Release the pack. Worry about yourself. You know that little um, video? It's so cute. The little girl goes, worry about yourself. And that's her message is worry about yourself. Um, worry about standing up for yourself, for your needs, um, pursuing your goals, and not having to worry so much about the group for the time being, for the time being. It doesn't make you any less of a loving, kind, compassionate person. What is the great wisdom you have learned the, for the light half of the year is to trust higher forces, trust your ancestors, trust your guides, trust your spirits, trust your higher self. Um, just trust. Uh, in higher energy, in spirit, in the divine, in the universe, in your creator, in source energy, um, trust in what you believe in. What wisdom does the dark season have to teach you? That you are the writer of your own story. And so I think maybe part of the issue is that you're, you're fearful or concerned that if you don't take care of everybody or you don't tend to other people's needs or you don't always act from a place of selflessness that people will say bad things about you or judge you poorly. Or, But the truth is you write your own narrative. You are the author of your story. You have creator power. Um, you have divine inner sovereignty. What does that mean? That means that you manifest, create um, the person you want to be, the experiences you live, and the outcomes you want to experience. And don't let other people determine that for you. So the wisdom the dark season has to teach you is that you are in the driver's seat. Yes, the work. I love this for you. You're in the driver's seat. So what, I think you need like, like, raw energy, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> Chanel, what are you talking about? I feel like you could benefit from crystals such as, uh, I'm collecting them, um, sunstone, this is the sunstone, red tiger's eye, uh, carnelian, 
I feel like you could benefit also from gold and tiger's eye. So what's the point here? I want you to really step into your solar plexus chakra um, for confidence and self-worth. I want you to really dig deep into your sacral chakra to connect to your passion, desire, and emotional needs. And I want you to also root yourself in the root chakra for your sense of belonging and deservingness in this world and security in this world. Um, you guys, uh, happy autumn equinox. Thank you very much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next week for the October preview. That's going to be on September 24th. Please join me on September 28th um, for a clubhouse reading. You'll find the links in my um, link tree that is below, in the description below. Um, so please do that. Join me. We'll do live readings. It'll be fun. It'll be a whole bop. Um, what else did I want to let you guys know? And at the beginning of October, there'll probably be another Instagram live, but I will update you on that. And be sure to check out my website because I am soon going to be offering, um, life coaching sessions and packages, spiritual life coaching sessions and packages. And basically the premise is that we're going to help you triumph over toxicity. Yay, which is perfectly in line for the dark half of the year. So I'm excited about that, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Have an awesome week. Um, and uh, I hope to see you again next week. Did I wish you love and light? Well, if I did, this is my sign that I need to give you more. I send you love, light, and namaste energy. Namaste, guys. Take care. Namaste, Moonstone Group. Thank you so much for joining me. As I mentioned in the introduction, this is your reading for Maybon. And for those of you who don't practice um, sabbats, then it is your reading for Autumn Equinox. And um, for those who don't do either, you're missing out. No, <laughs> Autumn Equinox is a, is a, it's like Buddhism. It's spiritually neutral. It's just a time of balance, of harvest, of release, um, and of finding the alignment between the light half of the year and the dark half of the year. Which is why I have my skulls out for us today, because skulls remind us of the dark things or the shadow energy that can be celebrated. Um, that is loss, grief, sadness, um, trauma, um, woundedness. It's, and I say celebrated, but it, we can't always celebrate it, but we can revere it and we can honor it as part of our journey, as part of where we've been, as part of um, our triumph. And um, so just as the shadow season has benefits and beauty and wisdom, the light season has benefits, beauty and wisdom. And for me, the skulls represent that energy. And Autumn Equinox is really a time of surrender for Gaia um, as she surrenders and goes into a phase of rest, restoration, renewal. Um, so yeah, it's just a real time to reflect and do your dream work and do your shadow work and reflect on what you want to do now that you have a little bit more time to yourself. Um, during the autumn and winter months, it just seems like a quieter phase for us. And it just seems like a quieter um, time for us. So that's a real um, blessing. All right, guys. So um, we're just going to do it like this. Position number one, two, three, four. And then we're going to do our message from uh, the dark season. Okay. Position number one is what is an approaching blessing to be thankful for? Time and space and energy, which is very similar to the hematite group. Time, space, and energy to take care of your own needs, to honor yourself, an opportunity, a reconnection to um, honoring yourself and um, taking time. That's what we were talking about. That's the beauty of the dark season, um, of the shadow season. It's about taking time to renew yourself. 
Position number two is how to achieve greater balance. And this is just about holding space for yourself. So these play together very nicely. Spirit is keeping the message um, simple for us today. It's about holding space for yourself, retreating from the world a little bit, um, honoring your the time you need, the space you need, the compassion you need in order to um, to take care of your needs and do what you need to do. If I say need one more time, I just don't know. Um, oh no, here we go. What needs to be released? <laughs> needs. Um, I feel like everything that is not uh, restorative, rejuvenated, renewing, anything that distracts from your higher purpose of going inward and hitting the reset button. So this is like spirits saying, Chanel, I'm going to keep it real simple. What is the blessing to be thankful for? What is the blessing to be thankful for? It's that you will finally have some space to take care of your needs. But this is not dropping out of the sky. Um, this is because you're holding space for yourself and you're letting go of anything that doesn't serve your your recharge, your reset, um, your release. Um, so yeah, I think that's very important. Spirit is telling you, you need this. Take time out to do this. And finally, what is the greatest wisdom you have learned this year? Learn from spiritual experiences. This is very similar. I love when this happens to the hematite group. This is very similar. And I like when this happens because it says synchronicity to me. So the message here is learn from spiritual experiences. So the wisdom that you learn is to trust in spirit, trust your intuition, trust your guides, angels, ascended masters, and learn from that spiritual world. Sometimes we're so much in the physical that we fail to observe, celebrate, immerse ourselves in the spiritual world beyond the veil, beyond the rules and limitations of the physical world. All right. What is the wisdom the dark season has to teach the Moonstone group? What is the wisdom here? here. The wisdom here is that you're responsible for bringing light, illumination, and healing into your life. You see this girl right here. She is painting the sun back into her own sky. And I feel like after a long time of doing for others and busyness and manifestation and the tangible world, you're being called inward to take care of yourself, to honor your needs, to learn from your spiritual journey thus far this year, and to illuminate yourself, honor your own inner light again, honor your own inner experience, create space and love and compassion for yourself. That feels good, guys. I love that. Um, and I want you to embrace that for yourself. I'm just looking at what crystals I want for you. Uh, I feel that I want you guys to like delve into like the pastels. Just because this is Amazonite, right? So truth, comfort, compassion, soothing energy. Then we have the rose quartz. This is actually a tumbled piece of rose quartz that turned out looking like a heart. I cherish it. Um, rose quartz, so that's love, compassion, peace, anxiety relief. Um, and that's a good energy for you as well. So anytime you're playing, blue quartz would also be good. It's great for sleep, dream work, restoration, peace, tranquility, serenity. That's what you're being called to do, to remove yourself from the external busyness and, and focus instead on your inner experience and give yourself a little bit of like a spiritual spa. <laughs> spiritual spa, like take care of your needs. Uh, so I hope that you do that, and I trust that it will be a nourishing experience uh, during the dark half of the year. All right, you guys, uh, I look forward to seeing you on um, September 28th on Clubhouse at 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, you can get the, in my link tree link in the description below, you will find, um, you know, links for my Etsy store so you can get some healing crystals for sleep. I think the sleep package will go really good for you, Moonstone Group, because it's also calm, meditation, and peace. 
um, you can find my clubhouse and follow me so that you can join when I'm doing live readings. And you can also go on my Instagram so that you can join those when I'm doing live readings and when we are doing um, discussions about spiritual matters and not so spiritual matters. <laughs> um, you guys, with every reading, I send out a little love and light and namaste energy. I sincerely hope you receive it today. And I look forward to seeing you again next week for the October preview. Namaste, guys. Namaste, Rodanai Group. Thank you so much for joining me. As I mentioned in the introduction, this is your Maybon slash Autumnal Equinox reading. Um, if you're into witchy vibes, then it would be more Maybon. But, I mean, if you're not comfortable with that, there's no, you know, reason why you can't just look at it as the Autumn Equinox. Um, either way, this is a time of harvest, of balance, of release, of surrender, of great wisdom and intuition, um, and of a time of going inward. You'll notice my skulls have joined us today because um, the message of the dark season or the shadow season, which is the dark half of the year, the message or the wisdom is that even if we don't feel like celebrating grief, loss, sadness, pain, trauma, it's hard to celebrate, we can show reverence for it. Um, and in the same way, some people love summer in the sun. As Gaia releases and surrenders her fertility and abundance right now, um, we can also celebrate her as showing us a way, showing her as the truth about the power and the importance of rest, renewal, um, and restoration and going inward. Um, so my skulls represent death. Um, my skulls represent wisdom. Um, my skulls represent the ancestors. And nothing spooky here. Unless you like spooky things, but I don't even like spooky things. I don't like horror movies and things like that. I, I'm like a chicken. I don't even like haunted houses. So for me, skulls are not spooky. I just feel like it sets the tone for us honoring the shadows, um, or mo mostly honoring the shadows uh, today with this reading. So we're going to be approaching it, um, looking at issues of harvest, because this is second harvest. We're going to be looking at issues of balance and um, release and then wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. So, just do it like this because that's how we roll today. It's kind of the vibe. Boom, 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 boom. I don't know why I did it that way today, but that's how it happened. Okay, position number one is what to be an approaching blessing to be thankful for. It says here, guardian angel, you're not alone. So it could be that an, a departed ancestor or loved one will try and make communication. But it could also be that you feel more supported by your chosen family, your spiritual family, or those around you. And you feel more supported in love. So a blessing to be thankful for is that very soon you will not feel so alienated, alone, isolated. We all struggle with those feelings sometimes, but soon you will get the affirmation that you are loved and that you are cherished, and that you are um, supported. And I'm excited for that for you. How to achieve greater balance. This is a vibe, guys. Accept that love, support, and comfort. It's hard sometimes to let people love us because sometimes we feel unworthy, sometimes we feel undeserving, or sometimes we feel like we gain our worth by loving others first. Let them love you. Um, that's how you find greater balance. You're not going to feel so alone soon. Let them love you. Your romantic partner, your family, your friends, like I said, your chosen family, let them love you. What needs to be released? I feel that this is similar to the Moonstone group. What needs to be released is anything that clouds your mind, keeps you, distracts you from deeper reflection, higher reflection. Um, anything that clouds your intuition. So this could look different to different people. Um, this could look like uh, negative uh, beliefs or limiting beliefs um, about your intuition or about your intellect or wisdom. Uh, this could also mean um, cutting off the busyness and the chaos, cutting off social media for a while 
or cutting off um, just the busyness and the chaos of the external world so you have time to reflect. But basically, whatever stands between you and deeper introspection, meditation, inspiration, and vision, um, cut it off. Cut it off. Pull the plug on that on that energy, on that noise. It's like the TV kind of blaring in the background and you just go like pull the plug. Um, what is the greatest wisdom you have learned this year? Is to set your sights higher. Is that whatever is happening in your current life is not, um, it's temporary. So I feel that for a lot of you, Rodenite group, you're learning that whatever is happening in the immediate life is temporary. Um, it does not define you, nor does it define the rest of your life. Whatever is happening um, that is tangible or that's inconvenient or stressful or painful in the moment does not define you and it does not mean that you have to bring it into the next moment, the next day, the next week, the next month or the next year. It's setting yourself higher, knowing that there's a bigger plan for you, knowing that the universe has a higher purpose, knowing that life is more than the day-to-day -day inconveniences and pain and suffering. I love this for you. So let's summarize before we go to the um, what the dark season has to teach you. Basically, the blessing that's coming is soon you won't feel so alone. And to achieve greater balance, accept that love and nourishment and support and comfort and all that good, good that they want to sprinkle on you. What needs to be released? Anything that's and hindering your ability to reflect, meditate, take time for yourself, and think and process things. Even if it's a limiting belief, let it go. Like Elsa said, let it go, let it go. What is the greatest wisdom you have learned this year? Is to set your sights higher. That it's so much bigger than like the daily BS inconveniences. You know, it's so much bigger than the hairdresser that makes you um, <laughs> flat iron or press your hair before she does your braids. <laughs> it's so much bigger than the coworker that keeps stealing your lunch. It's so much bigger than that. It's bigger. And I think that you've learned that and I'm proud of you for learning that. And just like I did with the Hematite group, I give you a round of applause for that one. What does the dark season have to teach you? What wisdom does the dark season have for you? My cup family from the Believe in Your Own Magic Oracle. Ooh, cards going everywhere. What do you say we take from the middle of the deck? That you can overcome whatever you need to overcome. That anything that's standing between you and your peace and your greatest good and your highest purpose, um, that you can freely let it go, overcome it, and and no longer have to be um, subjected to it. That you can slay them all. Be your own knight. Be your own knight in shining armor. Be your own hero. Be your own heroine. Be, be that for yourself. And I feel like that takes a lot of strength. And I also feel like you're going to be needing to do some reflecting. Um, so my recommendation for you is Sodalite because it's grounding, it connects you to your personal truth, it helps protect and ward negative energy, but it also gives you um, confidence and conviction and integrity. And I think that there's not enough of this in the world, but I'm sure you have it and this will amplify it. You guys, I look forward to seeing you on September 28th at 1 p.m. Eastern on Clubhouse. Go in my Linktree links, you will find my Clubhouse there. I look forward to seeing you sometime in the beginning of October. I'll keep you updated in order to see me live on Instagram. And the reason why I'm inviting you is because this way you get live readings, you get a little soulful chat, and we get to get to, we get to get to, we get to know each other and meet. Um, please go to qochealing.com. Soon I will be offering spiritual life coaching um, packages that I feel like will greatly benefit you and I think it's perfect timing considering that we're entering the dark part of the year. You guys, with every reading I send out a little love and light and namaste energy. I sincerely hope you receive it today and I look forward to seeing you next week for the October preview. Namaste guys. <laughs>